Take a time, take a time, take a time. No I'm need at to University worry. of West Indies Live on Bob Arts Television. I'm sitting, standing here. Take, uh, take, Roger take, Stephens, how are you doing? Take, I'm fine, Astro. It's nice to no see you when it's not snow worry. and it's 10 degrees below zero. You rest up, all right. <laughs> you know, um, Roger, we are the reggae month February 2015, and Roger is scheduled to talk here. At University of Westminster. Hey, my name is Asta Black, and you know that already. I want you to come to Sam Sharp Square and visit the Rastafari exhibition right here inside the Civic Center. See it? My number is 876-435-840. See? So, every Wednesday, come, give us a buzz. Every Wednesday, we'll be doing this tour right here. Ailey, Ailey. I'll take you personally to come and see the Rastafari exhibition. So no matter where you are, in the hotels or at home, give us a buzz and we will get you here on a Wednesday at 11 a.m. We'll give you a tour of the Rastafari exhibition right here inside the Civic Center, right here in Montego Bay. It is Sam Sharp Square and Sam Sharp lit the first fire to abolish slavery and he's right here. So come, okay, give me a call, choose your Wednesday and we take you on a tour. See, the amount that can come on the tour on a Wednesday is limited, so give me a call and make your reservation right now. It's 876-435-8401. Well, I'll give you one guess and its initials are a BM. <laughs> Bob Marley and yes, the Yes, all right. BMW. You're going to do the whalers. Bob Marley and the whalers. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, this is the annual Bob Marley lecture. Oh. And I stand in awe of the people who were here before me, Cindy Breakspear, and uh, Skill Cole, and Dr. Matthew Smith, who I have enormous respect for. And uh, I'm going to be previewing my forthcoming book. It's my seventh book on the history of reggae and uh, Bob Marley. And it's going to be called So Much Things to Say. Whoa, the oral history of Bob Marley. A hundred interviews with him and the people closest to him that I've conducted over the past 36 years. And I've been working on this book since 2002. And um, it's other people's memories of Bob. It's not you know, the Timothy White nonsense okay. where he's making up conversations between Bob and Rita in bed and all of that. It's the people who knew Bob, who lived with Bob, worked with Bob, telling their stories in their own words. And as, I'm, I'm giving you a real preview because I'm going to say a lot of this today. Um, there are no facts in Jamaica, only versions. True. Right? Yep. Yeah. So you're going to hear a lot of versions of the same thing by people who were all in the same room at the same time. Yes, yes, yes. With the most vastly contradictory memories. So the subtext of my, my talk tonight is questions for future historians. I remember visiting your house out there in L.A. Oh, you won't believe what happened I, to it. I've never seen so many memorabilias of Bob Marley. What happened to it? Well, you know what? It has tripled in size since Whoa. you were there. We had to move twice to house the collection. Our new house, I have now succeeded in filling. I just took over the last of the downstairs seven rooms. We used to have a guest room, now it's the reggae vault. And it's seven rooms, floor to ceiling, of over 300,000 items from the history of reggae. And I also want to correct the misapprehension that a lot of Jamaicans have about it. It is not the Bob Marley archive. Okay. It is the history of Jamaican Average. music going all the way back to Count Ossie and the Folks Brothers with O'Carolina. 90% of what I have preserved is other people. But of course, the, 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 the prow of the icebreaker of reggae is Bob Marley. Yes, yes, And yes. Uh, the most crucial artist, and that's probably the largest collection of Marley memorabilia and autographed records in, in the world, according to his band. Yes, yes. And they've met all their fans all see, over the world, see, you know, see, five see. times at least. Yeah, man. And uh, they tell me that, so sure. I don't mean to be immodest, but uh, in fact, I keep hoping there's somebody else out there who has all this stuff I don't have. You yeah, know? so you can get some more. Yeah, man. That's true. <laughs> um, would you say reggae music is indigenous to Jamaica? It was indigenous to Jamaica, and now some of the most significant reggae in the world is being made in other countries. 
it is other countries truly that are keeping the roots alive because the, the kind of music most people want to emulate in other countries is the roots Rasta Nyabingi style of music, the music uh, that is the rhythm of resistance. So that I've been in, in New Zealand where there was a band called Herbs made up of Maori, Samoans and Tongans who didn't normally get along too well together and uh, they formed a protest band to complain about the conditions in New Zealand They're called Herbs, another one called Unity Pacific whose leader is from the island of Niue. Uh, Aboriginal bands, yes. no fixed address. You're a great name for an true, Aboriginal true. band, and they make they made protest music in the outback of Australia. Do uh, you think they would have adopted a name like that because they're playing Rastafari indigenous music? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, you know, reggae has the capaciousness to adapt to a whole lot of different styles of music. Mm -hmm. Bob was experimenting with jazz and with bossa nova before he passed away. Mm -hmm. That's unreleased material that I have in my collection. And, um, but that wouldn't be reggae, though. That would be bossa nova and rhythm and blues. You yeah, can't really call but, it. But a, a Jamaican artist can play jazz and rhythm and blues. Doesn't and make it reggae. It doesn't no. make it reggae. But if you have that heartbeat beat underneath it, yeah, but if that the, heartbeat rhythm is there, yeah. you can put touches and flourishes yeah, over yeah, yeah. it. But the heartbeat is coming from the indigenous Jamaican who come, the music comes from the belly of us, not somebody jumping up on stage and say they're playing reggae and people believe them true, true. that they're playing reggae. But, and yeah. we, we, right now the people are being fooled that they're playing, that they're listening to reggae. Yeah. They're not hearing well, reggae. Hey, my name is Stephanie and you're watching Bob Arts Television. Hey, my name is Ras Asta Black. Come and meditate with I and I on the field. See, it's a cool way to pass the moment and enjoy the future. Come and meditate with I and I right here. My number is 876-435-8401. It's a Irie Vibes. Later. But, but Astor, there are an awful lot of reggae fans in France, in England, yeah, in, they, in they, Italy, they, in Germany. I talk to Ellen and Peter from Rhythm Magazine. Yes, yes. Every issue features people playing some roots in, reggae some, in yeah, Germany. Something, uh, there's something not indigenous to them. No, but they've adapted it. Yeah, and, adapt, and they've used they, the they, classic they, rhythm of reggae mm -hmm. to make their protest music and to right make now, spiritual statements. Yeah. I have no objection yeah, to that you, because you they're would, keeping yeah. the music alive. Yeah, but we are too. Yeah. But the only thing with us in Jamaica, mm -hmm. we don't have the, the big people who own the radio stations yeah. who will play black music. Isn't that amazing? Because when we first started coming here for Sun Splash 81, I first came here in 76, there was no reggae, reggae on the radio. I, we got out of the airplane in, in uh, June of 76 in Montego Bay. They were playing Hank Williams and Patsy Cline. And Michael and, Jackson. But worse, the first song I heard when I got into the airport was um, If You're Going to San Francisco, yeah. Wear Some Flowers in Your Hair. And I said, why did I fly all this? I way? know, man. It, it blows. And now you've got, what, 20 radio stations and a lot of micro stations, and, and hardly yeah, any yeah. of them are yeah. really playing the roots. Yeah. We, that Maxi, and, uh, yeah. and Maxi Romeo t talked about that yesterday at his seminar. Yeah. Is that why you think reggae music is moving away from Jamaica and some people jumping up on stage and playing something and said they're playing reggae? Is, you think that's why? Because we are not keeping it ours. Somebody is taking it and saying, yeah, like a, it's alleged that people even say that reggae is too big for a little island like Jamaica. Yeah. It's like Blue Mountain Coffee is too good for Jamaica. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with those people at all. But, um, you know, you're hammering away at this point over and over again. I don't think we should uh, resent other people playing taking something, the form. Playing, playing something like reggae. Not something like reggae, Astor. Reggae. Yeah. Dub. Reggae. Roots reggae music. I've been around the world yeah. five times you, and I've know, seen these Roger, bands and yeah, they man. are serious. They are Rastafarians. Yeah, of course. They may be white or yellow, mm -hmm. or brown dreadlocks. They are keeping the roots alive. They're talking about Haile Selassie and they're playing roots music. So don't uh, denigrate would. their work. They would, man. They yeah. would. And uh, I understand. When I started reggae in Chicago, we had reggae bands from Jamaica like um, 
um, Morgan Heritage's dad, mm -hmm. uh, Black Eagles, it was real reggae. Yeah. And people come out for the real reggae. Well, how so about Dalal in Chicago? Uh, Lotus is an Ethiopian Ethiopians. band. Did you consider that reggae? No, really. Ethiopian. But they play, they, they're Ethiopian trying to play reggae. Yeah. And I asked Ziggy, why did he choose them to back him up in his first Grammy mm. album? He said he wanted a different sound. He wanted a sound which blends the Ethiopian rhythm yeah. with reggae. But and you, he succeeded on that. So that was the reason why Dalo was there. Yeah. So but, but you can't after stop that, progress. You can't stop evolution. Reggae music is... But, but Bob would have taken the music in so many different new directions if he had stayed among us. Yeah, Anyhow, I'm being I, called I to 93. I don't so. think so, uh, but yeah, yeah, right. we'll I, agree I, to look disagree. At, look at, looking forward to the talk. And I'm going to um, blow some minds tonight. You're going to blow some minds? Oh, I promise right. you. Let's remind him that reggae is indigenous to Jamaica. Uh, there's a question. All right, no, we're staying. One love, everyone. <laughs> All right. Jell love. Roger Steffen, live on Bob Arts Television. I'll see you in a bit. Yeah, man, we're going to see what we're going. Every time a small island like Jamaica has something indigenous to us, there is the people who want to take it and say, it is too big for Jamaica. It is not. It's our, It's from our heartbeat. It's coming from our belly, not theirs. So let's collaborate, work together, and promote our indigenous music, Rastafari music, not their music. They love to call it theirs, but let's not keep, let, let's not allow them to do it. Blessed love. Don't go nowhere. Let's check him out. I said, I saw Ras Asta Black this morning on TV. The man was eloquent, clear, Winston. Winston. explicit, elegant, with knowledge wow, and fun. wisdom. I was very proud. Very, very proud. No Keep it going. Yeah. They're going to learn to see your word come to pass. <laughs> <laughs>